the whole idea here is to build a course on collaborative entrepreneurship that is geared for entrepreneurs that don't fit with the uh, for-profit model or not-for-profit model or the co-op model. But it's not necessarily for those that have swallowed the pill and want to reproduce organizations like Bitcoin or Sensorica or you know some of these like very um, futuristic, you know, call it like that, peer to peer. So it's it's to touch a, br a broader a broader audience, okay. Um, and so this presentation has has the sort of the structure of this course, right? So if you make a course on collaborative entrepreneurship for these people, that would be the <coughs> the um, uh, draft structure, right? So the, the whole purpose of, of this event was to uh, uh, discuss about this um, structure without getting too much into detail, because this is meant to be a course three hours a day for maybe 10, 12 days. So it's like a pretty long stretch. Um, so the content, the content will be, will be fixed uh, during the first course with feedback from, from the first cohort. Um, but now the, the whole idea now is just to, uh, um, just to brainstorm a little bit about the structure and, and talk about the content in every one of these uh, topics right, that uh, are gonna be discussed in the course. So, first of all, I think we have to show what is a collaborative enterprise and the best thing is to tell a story right so i thought the uh, the story of the matryoshka has been told many times uh, and it has we have uh, data on it and we can showcase these numbers so the point here is to say here's a story about how some people got together and designed something okay um and and how this went okay so so you have the object um and then uh, the story starts with Equal to Fest 2016, where you have some a group of designers from France, uh, from Paris, that come to Montreal with an open source design. So already you have an element in collaborative entrepreneurship, the sharing of designs. Um, they participate in this event, Equal to Fest 2016, um, which is a, an accelerator of uh, collaborative projects, open source development, um, and. Um, we meet with these guys, uh, we prototype one Matryoshka, and then the event is over, they leave, and the prototype goes to the Sensorica Lab, which is, uh, which is another type of environment, like a type of a makerspace, entrepreneurial makerspace. And then a bunch of people get together around this object um, and um, use a system of um, contribution accounting, meaning Everybody that gets involved, they log their contributions in time, in money, in materials, um, to leave a, to build a, a, an economic ledger of everyone's contribution. So that's how the story goes. It's integrated within this Sensorica space that has the tools and and the practices developed, and then together they add more functionality to this thing, and uh, make a demo, which is a better looking prototype that could be showcased in different um, public events in order to find a market and uh, find some uh, some buyers and the conclusion here is that everybody who contributed to this uh, used this project management system and then we have a, a history of how this new prototype was developed um, with uh, people's time involvement, with the use of space, tools, equipment, materials, and the estimated cost based on the data is around $77,000. Um, and through collaboration and mutualization of resources, uh, only $2,000 was spent in cash. So that story shows people that 
you, it is possible to get together to build something, to design something and build something, um, mutualizing resources, putting resources together. Um, so at the, at, at the psychological and social level of collaborative entrepreneurship, uh, this project tells you that things work and, and we have plenty of examples of open source development hardware and software where people get together and, and build stuff. Uh, most of them, um, they are not truly entrepreneurial because they're not looking to make a, a product to be sold on the market. Okay, it's just something to share. So we're like in a gift economy type of um, uh, environment. And here, uh, with this particular project, the goal was to make a product and, and see if there is a market for it. So this is, this story shows um, in context um, how people can get together and, and do something. Then the strategy in the course is to talk a little bit about economy, um, you know, just a, a general overview. I have a definition here. An economy is a large set of interrelated production and consumption activities that aid in determining how scarce resources are allocated. This is also known as an economic system. And now people talk about different types of economies. You have the attention economy, intention economy, support economy, gift economy, sharing economy, ethical economy, circular economy. And this is, this is something that uh, you, you like. Uh, they have a social economy and a collaborative economy. So <coughs> these are different ways people get together. These are different sets of relations. So when we say economy, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of practices, there's a bunch of systems. Um, um, and maybe in the course we, we can just surf all that because this is relevant. An entrepreneur that wants to get into um, innovation, design, production of material products, uh, they might want to integrate attention economy features. Uh, and the way they design the product, they might, get, they might acquire some collaborative economy features. And maybe this product has a social mission, you see. So <clears throat> in the course, t talking about these things um, gives, a, gives a larger perspective to entrepreneurs um, to uh, shape their business model and their entrepreneurial practices. So I think this, is, this, can, be a, this can be one of the topics that could be discussed in, in the beginning. Um, <laughs> Another thing that, that I want to stress in this course is the fact that we live in a world in transition. Um, meaning that, and, and the transition is, is pretty fast. It happens at a very rapid pace. So any entrepreneur that wants to create a business uh, or a venture um, has to take that into consideration. Take into consideration the fact that the business model itself uh, might be adequate for today, but two, three years down the road, um, it might be disrupted. Um, so designing an enterprise, um, adopting a certain type of um, entrepreneurship uh, practices needs to take that in, into consideration. So you build organizations that can uh, be easily adaptable. And actually what, what makes things change is the introduction of new technologies. Okay. Uh, here's a map of, of how things have evolved since 1990. Um, and this is just to tell people how the internet, for example, and the digital technology have introduced new uh, business practices um, from 1994 uh, to uh, today. With a big disruption that happened uh, after 2008, which is the introduction of blockchain technologies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, so on and so forth. And, um, and there's other disruptors. So there's IoT that, that evolves and there is artificial intelligence also. So when you put these together, IoT, blockchain and uh, AI, um, these are three game changers, game changing technologies that uh, when put together, 
uh, the acceleration of change is, is even larger. So I guess here is to open the minds of, of cloud entrepreneurs and get them to think that um, we're past the, uh, the, the time when you build an organization to last, you know what I'm saying, forever. And you build, a, you build it as a monolith, you know, something that is rigid and it can go through ages without too much change. Uh, we live in a very, very dynamic environment, and, uh, and these are just the technologies that, that are going to be disrupting everything uh, very fast. <coughs> Another thing that, uh, that we want to we wanna project uh, during this course is um, so, so our models, you know, evolve in this environment in Sorica. Okay, so when, you, when we don't want these people that come to take the course to think that what we want to uh, teach them is how to operate like Sensorica or how to operate like Bitcoin. Okay, so in a world in transition, these are these are futuristic things. So it's it's like you're looking on a catwalk and, and, and have these futuristic designs, you don't see people walking on the street like that, right? Um, <clears throat> but, but what you're seeing when you see these kind of designs, you see a window into the future. You know, you might see some new technology uh, incorporated into the clothing. You might see some, uh, I don't know, uh, new type of fibers, some sensors, some, uh, you know. So these features, they might, they might be integrated later on uh, but it's a sort of a window into the future, right? So that, these are futuristic designs. And, and Bitcoin and Sensorica and you know, other peer-to-peer -peer, uh, organizations, uh, part of this peer-to-peer -peer collaborative economy, uh, uh, they are made for the future. You see what I'm saying? These are grounds of experimentation of what will be later, okay? So the message in the course is is to, is to actually build hybrid models. Okay, so a hybrid model is, a hybrid organizational model is a model that um, connects to the actual local environment. Um, it's a model that is compatible with today, but has the DNA to evolve in the near future. You see. Um, so, the message is not, well, we're going to teach you how to, you know, operate like Sensorica and have projects that are totally open, transparent, and, uh, you know, collaborative, and, uh, you know, use stigmergy and, and all these, these words that we use, this language that we use, uh, is to say, yes, you can have a co-op, you can have, uh, you know, classical organizations, traditional organizations, uh, traditional legal structures, and say, um, you can go with these models because you're, you're interoperable. You can work with the government, you can work with other organizations around, <clears throat> but you can still integrate features of these futuristic designs. Okay, so I think this, is, this, illustrates, uh, this illustrates it uh, pretty well. When you see the, you know, the invention of the motor applied to transportation, the car, in the beginning you have just the horse replaced by, by a motor. And why are these new cars, why do they look like, like the, the horse buggy? Um, it's, it's not just a lack of imagination. It's not that these designers back then um, <clears throat> couldn't design the car of today on paper. Okay? Um, it's also that they had to design so that the object could be easily manufacturable. So, there was a lot of artisans around building the wheels, the chassis, the suspension. <clears throat> so, you know, you design something that could be actually built tomorrow on a large scale. See, so, so the hybrid model is how do I plug into the, 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 the current infrastructure? How do I plug into the current world, you know, um, without having to create everything from scratch fast, like supply chains and, you know, uh, all these, this, this, everything you need to make a modern car, right? So you have to plug into the, the, uh, the, the actual world. So th this, is the, this is the type of the message um, that, um, I mean, this is, this is how I think that the, the, the course should be tuned, you see, in order to, to reach 
out to 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 greater uh, audience. Because there's a lot of entrepreneurs there that look at Sensorica and this is this is the this is our experience. They look at Sensorica and say, you know, this is way out there. How can we do that today? You know, we have so many roadblocks, and that is because the the structure, the thing, the organization, it's it's not compatible. It's you know, it's an organization that lives in the past, meaning it's built on the future, but it lives today. You see? Um, so, so a lot of people, they look at it and they don't, they, they, they're paralyzed. They don't know what to do with it now. You see? Um, but um, I think to be more realistic is to say, uh, well, that's fine. That's fine. You can still use old traditional structures. Um, but... Here are a bunch of elements that you can integrate into your venture and slowly, slowly um, adapt as things change more and more. And, and here's an example of hybrid organization compared to a traditional organization. Okay, so when you go to the horse, uh, and buggy and, and, and the, the, the original car, uh, the engine on a buggy is Adafruit. And the Radio Shack is the horse on the buggy. Okay. Uh, and it's very interesting to look at the success of some hybrid models. Okay, so Adafruit uh, grew in three years in a row for 700, over 700%. That's huge growth, huge. So they, they were created in 2005 and already in 2014, so nine years later, uh, they, were, um, they were selling for over $30 million. Okay. And what's interesting here is that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was no venture capital within, in, in Adafruit. There was no investment. It was, this is very rapid organic growth. <laughs> it's it's mind-boggling, and when we look at Radio Shack, it's, it, you know it's 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 on a um, downward uh, curve. Okay, it doesn't mean it's going to disappear tomorrow, but you see the trends since two thousand and nine when this peer-to-peer -peer collaborative economy started to emerge, and you had these new collaborative models, uh, growing communities around open-source hardware, because Radio Shack sells hardware for who? For hobbyists. And that's why the comparison is good. And Adafruit sells hardware for hobbies. The difference is that Adafruit has a huge open community of innovators. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and so they have a bond with their clients. And the clients are prosumers. They're involved in, 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 in innovation. So Radio Shack, they, you know, um, they're still a you know, traditionally minded, minded organization. But the type of products they sell are very similar. Okay, and, and they address the same, the same category of, uh, of people. So you see one going down. Uh, it's like, you know, go, going back to the horse and buggy, you know, at some point cars replaced horses on the street. It took a lot of time, you know, but, uh, and in some countries you still have cars and, <laughs> and horses coexisting, right? But, um, but uh, we kind of see that, that trend with, uh, with these hybrid, uh, hybrid models. So, so what do you think about the, the orientation? Anything to add? Mm -hmm. Anything else to add? Um, well, I'm curious to see what, what uh, is, is the presentation. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not finished. This is this is just the uh, the positioning. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Who do we talk to, and what kind of message are we sending? You know, we're mostly talking about these hybrid models. Yeah, I fully agree. It's, <laughs> it's 100 percent on spot. Uh, it's very important to uh, to. To show with examples like that, to uh, uh, would would give more uh, precise details on those elements. You said that yes, we show elements that could be integrated to form such structures. Uh, I would give uh, more emphasis on those elements, but of course, it's gonna come. It's, it's gonna come after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, more, more smaller. Uh, very realistic steps that realistic elements that could be added to one's idea or one's project or whatever that can that can help this resilience as an example uh, uh, 
I love the start of the show in different types of economies. It's, uh, it's incredibly important uh, as a literature review. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a must to start with a, with a comprehensive literature review and kind of to open the perspective of where collaborative economy falls and not be an, as mistaken. <coughs> Maybe eventually we could have like, uh, you know, people like to see visuals. Table of yeah, it would be nice to, s to synthesize this into, a, into an image because they mm -hmm. do have things in common. Take the circular right. economy, for example, and the collaborative economy, they have things in common, and with the ethical economy too. Yeah. Sharing economy, collaborative economy, a lot of people, they... Social intention. Yes. A lot of people, they do uh, confuse these two, social economy and collaborative economy. Yeah, I think it will definitely be good here. And, and sharing economy, so these things are are seen as uh, yeah. synonyms, but they're not, you know, so. Yeah. So yeah. there's parts in common and parts that are, that are different and it would be yeah. nice, yeah, it would be nice to have a, a, yeah, a graphic. Put like design. some trades and maybe uh, circ circles around each uh, combination or something, yes. something like that. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. or arrows or something like that. Yeah. I love the emphasis on the resiliency. I think this is incredibly important and this is something that is incredibly missed <laughs> in, uh, in entrepreneurship, there's so much straight lines. Uh, I guess I don't know if we will talk about it later, but the market approach or, or when the business study starts with selecting a client segmentation, or selecting someone that can buy. Yes, we, yes, yes. That that that's good. that's a topic in the like, course. Yeah. It's like reverse engineered. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the the approach is is reversed. In, yeah, uh, at least the two different approach to do the difference between the two approaches because the con in, in conventional approach it's just a straight line where you have to adapt yourself you have to adapt your project to whoever was gonna buy it while there's the other approach that your project you are convinced of your project and you are you are sure that if you present it in a convincing way some people may like it so kind of like leading versus following yes 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 or building up what you think or what you feel rather than building up what what other people will pay for which is not yeah. even what they feel yeah there's a lot of that built into other fruits business model right mm -hmm. so that's why in the course i think we we have to take this kind of you know arduino other fruit um you know a bunch of these these enterprises and dissect them mm -hmm. and yeah, there's a bunch come back with examples uh Within the core structure, and, and you'll see the core structure. We we talk about uh, we talk about uh, I, I don't want to say market research, but th there is some there is some language for that. There. Yeah, it's, it's incredible that uh, the more examples there is, the clearer the clearer the idea is going to be transported. Trans yeah. And there is no shortage of examples. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Hybrid models like that. There's a <coughs> there's a few very very successful ones. Yeah. As we have successful examples um, of purely peer-to-peer -peer stuff, but they're more scarce and they still very poorly understood. Um, yeah. Onshape is doing a and great job in the GAD system. The, you know Onshape? It it's a collaborative software for CAD? Yes. Uh, it's basically the, a few of the founders of SolidWorks Yes. decided to go uh, the wrong path and decided mm -hmm. to go open source and they created this not so long ago like i don't think it's more than five years old and already many companies are switching from solidworks to onshape okay they made it like google docs yes 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 and it's and they like all all those plugins that usually you pay for on solidworks they're now free okay yes they're not free only if you want your files to be uh, open <coughs> you're free if you want sure. your files open. If yeah. you want your files private, then you have to pay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but it makes enough money. It makes them yes, enough money yes, to keep yes. growing. Yeah, it's yeah. a very good example. Yeah. 2018 was a great year for them. Okay. Yeah, I have to follow this. I I, I know the name. I, I played mm -hmm. with it a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's very follow. impressive. I'm sure. So, <coughs> you know, after this overview of of you know, after the positioning and after the overview of the course and after the overview of, of economies and stuff like that, different types of economies. Um, 
you know, I, I, I foresee a session in the course about uh, the entrepreneur. Okay, so now we're talking to a person, right? Of course, essentially. So if I have a definition here, an entrepreneur is a person who organizes and manages any enterprise especially a business, usually with consider considerable initiative and risk. And if you look, <coughs> if you do a search on Google, you find different types of entrepreneurs. Okay, so you find the for-profit entrepreneur, the social entrepreneur, the cultural entrepreneur, the one that builds a brand of, it, of himself. You, you find a lot of that on, on, on YouTube and social media. You know, people like, people like musicians, that grow a community and, and, and build a brand. So they're, they're the one-man show, right? They're the brand. Uh, but what they, what they create and, and, and distribute is, is culture, it's music, it's paintings and, and all that stuff. Then you have the collaborative entrepreneur, uh, which is the focus of the course. Mm -hmm. Then you have other different types of, you can cut it in different, different ways, okay? So you have the innovator type entrepreneur, okay, uh, with, uh, you know, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates being the poster child. Um, you have the hustler, the one that is, you know, nagging and relentless and pushing. And you have the imitator, the copycat entrepreneur. Uh, you have the uh, Fabian researcher, buyer, drone entrepreneur. The drone entrepreneur is an entrepreneur that um, doesn't like to change. Is very traditional. Hmm. Keep keeps the thing if it works. Um, you can find that in. Uh, uh, old, let's say, uh, old traditional restaurants, uh, you know, like uh, here in Montreal, we have um, the smoked meat uh, uh, place, uh, Schwartz. Mm -hmm. Okay, that kind of place is a drone entrepreneur. Don't change anything, right? <laughs> okay. Working, yeah, yes. Uh, then you have the entrepreneurs that operates that, that operates very well at the small scale. You have the ones at the medium scale. You have the ones at the large scale. And usually when you have a startup, um, the visionaries, the ones that start the venture, um, must be switched with the ones that um, manage um, growth and, and scaling. Okay, so it's not the same personality. Um, then you have the private entrepreneur, state entrepreneur, and joint entrepreneurs. Uh, private entrepreneur is the startup guy or girl. Uh, state entrepreneur, they're, they're people working in large institutions that are you know, trying to make things better, bring innovation to these institutions. So there's a fair amount of risk because they put their name and reputation and career on the stake. Um, if something bad happens, you know, they're, they're, they, they could be judged. But also if they succeed, you know, they, they can advance, uh, they can advance in, in the hierarchy. And joint entrepreneurs, these, these are entrepreneurs that actually are in between kind of private and state. So these are the uh, private public partnership, you know, spaces where you have enterprise collaborating with uh, state institutions um, so it, it, it requires yet another different mentality for for these people so here too uh, we could uh, you know these are profiles of entrepreneurs cut along different dimensions and uh, could have like a quick non quick idea here is that this could be kind of because <coughs> usually there's a, in a course there's like an evaluation criteria in a sense and I feel that these are all stuff that are somewhat essential and they, they have to be at, at different levels and different people have them at different levels so something very interesting here is that, that if those skills or uh, characteristics are monitored throughout the course by whatever examples then uh, you mean with individual people uh, yeah, according yeah. to their own profiles yeah because I'm sure the course is going to contain a lot of exercises yes 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 so those those kind of can be monitored and then at the end of the course the person can somehow identify what well, <coughs> strengths and exactly. weaknesses are and yes 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 like yes, yes. So what type of entrepreneur are you where do you fit in this kind of uh, exactly. uh, categorization you scheme have, uh, more of this less of that maybe you need someone to collaborate with that has more of this and less of yeah that. yeah it creates a nice uh, effect yeah, I added environmental entrepreneur, which is uh, mm -hmm. um, which is another um, uh, thing that I that I found. Uh, these are people that are uh, creating ventures that most of the time feed on um, money coming through foundations, um, and their thing is to clean, let's say, a river or some type of physical environment. Uh, 
um, and their main concern is about you know um, doing something for the environment, which is not the same thing as social entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. So where are we? We're here. So talking about the entrepreneur, and then, and then, uh, well, now now we can we can look at the uh, the overview of the course. Um, so this would be the topic. So if you look at it, you could have a minimum of seven different courses. But some of these topics, like resources, um, might take operations, might take uh, more than one session. So I suppose, I don't know, 10, 10 sessions for the entire course. Okay. Yes. Keep going. I have a talk in here as well. Okay. So the first topic is to create a collaborative venture. Okay. And so, so these are the topics. We're not going to go into the content, but just say what they are, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is to tell people, uh, well, um, you know, before you start anything, you have to think about the structure and the legal aspects and and actually mapping what I call mapping the value system. Is what is the, what is it that you do? Uh, what are the processes that are involved? What, what kind of resources are you using? Um, and uh, how how is how are these resources flowing through your organization? And how is valuable stuff, products or services created and how do they go out there to people that need them? Okay, mapping the value system. Um, and based on that, you build the organizational structure. You see, I mean, if you, if you have a certain type of flow of resources within processes, uh, then the organizational structure follows that. Um, so, so, so here I put the REA model, um, which is a an ontology and a modeling language for economic processes. Um, and I think it is very, it, it is essential to, to be able to map the value system and extract the, the organizational structure on top of that. Okay, so this is a very, very, this will be a very, very technical session. Um, and probably requires an introduction to REA, this ontology, resource a uh, events agents. Um, because, because this is an exercise to look into the skeleton of what you want to build. And for that, it requires some training. You see, uh, if, if somebody wants to open a depanner, the operation is pretty simple. You know, you have a sales point and you have suppliers putting stuff in your space and customers buying it. So you just have to manage how do you put stuff on the shelf, you know, manage your inventory, right? And have a commerce a kind of operation. That's very simple. But if you want to do something that involves research and development, you know, innovation and production and distribution and services, and you want to build a community around that uh, to innovate, uh, all of a sudden you have a more complex thing, right? So you have to map out this ecosystem or the value system and then extract the organizational structure. But when, it, when you extract the organizational structure, it's actually, you have to use some modeling language. You see, it's like you say, I want to build an app. And the app has to do this, this, and that, okay? Um, and then building the app requires modeling, okay? So you take everything that the user has to do in real world, and you model it into your application, okay? So then you use different types of languages that have been developed by web designers, okay, to, uh, to create the structure of that thing, okay? Which is, a, which is a model. It's an abstraction of the real thing, right? So, you know, I think I think this this has this has to be a very very technical technical course, uh, going a little bit into the REA, um, and 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 another one which is kind of separated from that is the legal aspects, mm -hmm. which is now that you have mapped your value system, 
and you have extracted an organizational structure using this REA model, how do you plug into the world? How do you exist for the government? How do you sign contracts with other organizations? Um, what is the relationship between you know, um, stakeholders? Are they employees, investors, and all that stuff? So there's, 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 a, there's a legal framework okay, that you have to work with. 